Hello, Frankie. And Pauline Roberts from the UK. So we have wonderful number of people. Nicola. Aha, good. So Nicola started everything uh, right away. Stopped this hello, how are you thing, which could have gone on for a long time. And I was enjoying it to see what is our demographic. So and Nicole says, how do you really find self-love? Well, Nicola from UK, it's very difficult to love something if you don't know anything about it. And what you know is very limited to the physical appearance of that thing. And we seem to be conditioned to only pay attention to the physical appearance of things these days, or since <laughs> thousands of years ago. And we're still living on the same premise, that if something we see, that's all there is to it. So we got to make our judgments based on what we see, or what we hear, or what we touch. And these are using our senses seems to be the only thing that we think we should be aware of, whatever our senses can tell us, the five senses, you know, seeing, smelling, tasting, hearing, and touching. And that seems logical and reasonable because we are animals who are operating on using these um, facilities that we have in order to negotiate our ways and, you know, deal with things that come about. But are these senses really enough to let us know what things are all about? Is there anything else here that we are missing in understanding other people and, regarding your question, knowing about ourselves? If we go by the same rule as we talked about, so the way to know each other would be according to how we talk with each other, the tone of our voice, how we look, how we are groomed, how we treat each other, and how we touch and enjoy and pleasures that we receive or give to each other physically. So if that's the way we are going to use to know ourselves, it's going to be very limited and it's not going to work. Neither it works towards knowing other people thoroughly, nor does it work toward ourselves. Why? Because, as you know, we are all made out of mind and the body. And body is very easy to see it and recognize it. Either you like it or you don't like it. Somebody's body, somebody's voice, somebody's uh, manners and so on, very easy to decide. I want to have nothing to do with this girl or with this guy. Whatever your friendship or relationship or uh, intentions are. But then there is the mind that is part of our entity, which we seem to be oblivious of it. Just like when we see the tip of the iceberg in the ocean, we think that's all there is to the, to the iceberg. However, hundreds of times or tens of times bigger than what's visible on the surface of the iceberg, surface of the ocean of that iceberg is underneath the ocean, and it's not visible. But if you want to judge that what you see is the totality of the iceberg, well, then you don't have clear understanding of the limitations or the abilities, the size and power of the iceberg. Same thing with us. We see each other by the way of physical appearance, and we judge each other on those bases that we just talked about, and we totally forget about what is their mind made out of. So coming back to your question, what do you know about yourself to be able to establish if you love yourself or not? Your whole understanding of you is based on what the other people are telling you or what interactions or attentions you receive from others. That has become your measuring stick to know if you're good or bad. So-and-so said something good. So-and-so whistled for me because you had your nice clothes on or however you looked or so-and-so was paying attention to me or this and that. But as you know, that is not really what we are. That's just an opinion of some people. And it's like Facebook page that we have. We like to see more thumbs up 
or more likes, and then we think we are we just made it. I mean, we are so popular now. We've accomplished something because other people gave us lots of likes. So when you get lots of attention from people, you think that you really have accomplished something. And how do you go about it about yourself? So you groom yourself, you wear nice clothes, you educate yourself, and you think you know yourself. You get a job, you make some money, and you think you know yourself. You drive a nice car, and you think you know yourself. No. These are things that gives you pleasure. These are things that you're interested in. How do you get to know yourself? Well, you got to focus on what is the mind's role is in your life. There's a lot to talk about this subject, about what the role of the mind is. We've talked about it in many of my videos on YouTube channel, about 300 of them. When you go to the playlist I have named Psyche, the Psyche, that explains many things. One of them would be about power of mind, the energy of mind, and understanding the relationship between our mind and body and our mind with the universal and nature's energy. And that explains it in detail. And in one of my books, Me, My Psyche, and I, you will have a big chapter on this um, topic of mind and mind power. However, we are not going to be talking about the relationship between mind and the energy of the nature. We're going to be talking about what you can really see it without getting into that kind of a philosophy. So how do you love yourself is by knowing yourself. How do you know yourself? By knowing the field of the known, the consciousness, by understanding how you've been put together. What are the things that actually has influenced you and put you together, put the material, the, the content of your consciousness, how has it been affected? How has it been collected? How has it been deposited in here, which we call memory, the field of the known, which creates you, you as a center, as a whole, your center is the content of your consciousness. And ever since childhood and before even you were born, and thousands of years ago, many of the traits that you carry on through your genes from your ancestors have been transferred to you through your parents and so on and so forth. And when you grew up, when you were born, uh, through your mom's behavior and the way she treated you, your dads, your siblings, the teachers, the constable in the street, the laws and rules, the religions, and traditions and customs and nationality and all these, all the taboos and all the good stuff and all the newspapers and TV and programs and things that you've been exposed to, people you have come to contact you, you were programmed with certain information in your consciousness. Based on that, your thoughts were born. From your thoughts, an action. From the action, an experience. From that experience, knowledge. And that knowledge goes back and is recorded in your consciousness, in your memory. And from that again, a new thought. And this is how you can understand what you are all about. You're not all about the way you look, how beautiful your eyes or your face or your body is, how, your, how cascading your hair is, or if you have or don't have hair, or whatever it is that you seem to physically decide about your appearance. It's all about the ingredients that shapes the content of your consciousness from which your thoughts are born. And the content of your consciousness being the watcher, being the controller of your thoughts, since your thoughts are born in that field of the known, the consciousness. So therefore you can say, your consciousness is controlling your thoughts. Yet, your thoughts are what creates the action, experience, knowledge, which is deposited in your memory and creates your consciousness. So, the watcher, the controller, the consciousness is the thought, is the watched, is the observed, is the controlled. The consciousness being the controller of thoughts, so consciousness being controller, thoughts being the controlled, consciousness being observer, thoughts being the observed, consciousness being the watcher and the thought being the watched. 
So in this case, you will see that the thought is the consciousness. The watcher is the watched. The watched is the watcher because the watcher, the controller, is made out of all these thoughts that it create action and the experience and the knowledge and it becomes memory which creates the watcher. So by understanding how you're put together, you will be able to see what is or is not good or correct according to what is the truth and the way to harmonize yourself with life, with the others, with the interaction, with this journey of the life that we have. And in that way, then you have enough knowledge why you get afraid, why you desire, why you have ego, why this thought is there, should it be there, the effect of it to the society, to you, to the people around you. You have enough information about you. Then, and only then, you're free. And you can tell and see if that is something you like to love. Without knowledge, which is always limited, of course, because you're always evolving, but at least it will give you a good head start to know enough to know what conditionings that you have received needs to be changed, needs to be worked on. What you're building, if it's palatable or according to the path that you've taken or not. And then you can decide if you can love yourself or not. That was a long talk I know but it was only a short part of it and uh, you probably sorry you asked the question but <laughs> that's what happens I hope to to explain as much as I can this short time that we have whenever you ask a question but this is what you want to talk so if you go on my channel on YouTube channel and tune in and look for the psyche the playlist the psyche there is one says the quality of life watcher and the watched controller and the control. That will explain a lot more, and then you will be able to have some more idea about it. So I hope I answered your question, at least to the point that it will give you something to ponder.